The following is a contrast between two kinds of people in two different clips. In both clips, we see a speaker addressing an assembly wherein the protesting viewpoint is apparently in the minority. In the first clip, the speaker is an invited guest at a convention, speaking to a mixed group of students and faculty members with widely differing viewpoints. In the second clip, the speaker is addressing a crowd at an event hosted specifically for him, wherein, presumably, all those in attendance are there specifically to hear his viewpoint. I underscore this point because it has much to do with determining the justice or injustice of what plays out in each situation. In the first clip, we see Dan Savage, creator of the It Gets Better project and author of the syndicated advice column, Savage Love, featured in The Onion, among others, addressing students April 12, 2012 at the National High School Journalism Convention on the subject of bullying. The Bible. We'll just talk about the Bible for a second. Uh, people often point out that they can't help it. They can't help with the anti-gay bullying because it says right there in Leviticus, it says right there in Timothy, it says right there in Romans that being gay is wrong. We can learn to ignore the bullshit in the Bible about gay people the same way the same way we have learned to ignore the bullshit in the Bible about shellfish, about slavery, about dinner, about farming, about menstruation, about virginity, about masturbation, we ignore bullshit in the Bible about all sorts of things. The Bible is a radically pro-slavery document. Slave owners waved Bibles over their heads during the Civil War and justified it. The shortest book in the New Testament is a letter from Paul to a Christian slave owner about owning his Christian slave. And Paul doesn't say Christians don't own people. Paul talks about how Christians own people. We ignore what the Bible says about slavery because the Bible got slavery wrong. No, Dan, the Bible didn't get slavery wrong. You get the Bible wrong. There are thousands of scholarly exegetical studies available on the internet deal detailing with what was going on in Leviticus, should you actually care about context. But as time is short and the purpose of this vid is not to address your woeful misunderstandings, but rather to juxtapose the approaches of so-called tolerant and intolerant, I leave you with just one passage which has been the mandate for Christians for nearly 2,000 years. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond, that means slave, nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3.28 Not a lot of room in there for racism, slavery, classism, misogyny, sexism, or any of the other charges often leveled at Christians. Eisegesis, that's superimposing your own interpretation on the text, is no substitute for exegesis, that is what the text is actually saying in context. Always good to remember if truth is your actual aim. Nobody likes it when their words are taken out of context. Yet the ones most often offended by this are the very ones who see no hypocrisy in taking the words of the living God out of context. Well, please do go on with this riveting and insightful anti-bullying appeal. Tim, uh, Sam Harris, in Letter to a Christian Nation, points out that, if the, that the Bible got the easiest moral question that humanity has ever faced wrong. Slavery. What are the odds that the Bible got something as complicated as human sexuality wrong? 100%. The Bible says that if your daughter's not a virgin on her wedding night, if a woman isn't a virgin on her wedding night, she shall be dragged to her father's doorstep and stoned to death. Callista Gingrich lives. And there is no effort. There is no effort to amend state constitutions to make it legal to stone women to death on their wedding night if they're not virgins. At least not yet. We don't know where the GOP is going these days. <laughs> people are dying because people can't clear this one last hurdle. They can't get past this one last thing in the Bible about homosexuality. Yes, that's right, folks. Bible-believing Christians who take to heart the words of Christ to love your enemies and even do good to those that persecute you are the ones bullying and even slaughtering gays through suicide. This awful relic, the Bible, is what is really hampering it from getting better. 
Remember the Westboro Baptists. Those are who Christians really are. Um, one thing I want to talk about is... <laughs> so you can tell the Bible guys in the hall, they can come back now because I'm done beating up the Bible. <laughs> It's funny as someone who's on the receiving end of beatings that are justified by the Bible, how pansy ass some people react when you push back. <laughs> man, 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 man. All I can say to that is damn. Girl, now. I apologize if I hurt anyone's feelings, but I have a right to defend myself. Yes, Dan, you poor press thing, you. You have the right to defend yourself against these bigoted Christian kids who could no longer sit through your drivel and had to walk out on you. Oh. What a bunch of big meanies they are, the bullies. And to point out the hypocrisy of people who justify anti-gay bigotry by pointing to the Bible and insisting we must live by the code of Leviticus on this one issue and no other. Other parts of the Leviticus code found in the very same chapter 18 is a verse about homosexuality being an abomination that many of us, though I certainly won't speak for Dan, still see as useful to live by. Don't engage in incest, verse 6, and specifically don't have sex with your mom, verse 7 and 8, your sister, even your stepsister, verse 9 and 11, your granddaughter, verse 10, your aunt or uncle, verse 12 to 14, your daughter-in-law, verse 15, your sister-in-law, verse 16, your stepdaughter or step-granddaughter, verse 17, don't commit adultery, verse 20, don't burn your kids in the fire for Moloch like the heathens, verse 20, uh, don't commit homosexuality, that's verse 22, don't commit bestiality, verse 23, don't defile yourself with these practices like the heathens did and brought upon themselves death and dispersal. Obey the Lord and He will bless you. Disobeying you bring, yourself, bring upon yourself the disease, misery, suffering, and death inherent to such abomination. The choice is yours. You've been warned. There is no excuse. See, this is what a good earthly father would say. So how much more so our Father in Heaven? I'm your Father whether you like it or not. and You can choose to either trust that I know what's best for you or find out the hard way. I tell you in advance what the consequences for your disobedience will be because I care for you and long for you to obey willingly for your own good that you may live contentedly in peace. Sounds pretty reasonable to me, Dan. Now let's contrast the methods of the genteel savage with those of a religious bigot. Notice that the bigot is speaking at his own event to an audience who specifically came out to see him rather than a convention wherein you have a far more unassuming and mixed audience. Let us also contrast the methods of protest used against each speaker and judge for ourselves who are the tolerant ones and who are the oppressive, hateful, bullying bigots. Let me take you now to Indiana University, Doug Wilson. He is a Presbyterian minister. Blog, May Blog is a w very clever stuff. Might not agree with all of it. Very clever Christian blogger. He was appearing at Indiana University. Apparently, this whole Occupy business isn't quite done yet because some students there decided to show him some tolerant love and occupy his lecture. <laughs> Yeah. 
because this should be a place where everyone is accepted. <laughs> Except you people. Listen very carefully. Doug Wilson tries to get control of the situation. At the very end of this, about 25 seconds, give or take, listen very carefully to the younger addressing the elder. This is not the first time I've run, run into the tolerance bus saw. <laughs> the diversity crowd has two fundamental tenets. The first is that they have an absolute commitment to free speech. The second tenet is shut up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did you hear the youth address the elder? Shut up. So who exactly is bullying who?